Welcome back to another episode in the Introduction to Windows Forensics series. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new tool from Eric Zimmerman called EVTX eCMD. This is an extremely useful command line utility that can be used to parse Windows events from a specified EVTX file or recursively through a specified directory of numerous EVTX files. Now, there are plenty of Windows event log parsers out there. So what's special about this? Well, glad you asked. The magic of this utility is in the maps that are included with EVTX eCMD or that can be custom created. So what's a map? Well, a map is used to convert the event data, which is the meat of the event log, the most important and unique part of the event, to a more standardized and easier to understand format. These can include things like an administrative logon, a logon using explicit credentials, using run as, for example, WMI event consumer registration, and the list goes on and on. You can read more about this on this webpage that you're looking at, and you'll also find information on how to create your own maps. Another feature that sets this tool apart from others is that it's VSS aware. So by using a simple command line option, the tool will automatically iterate through all available volume shadows and extract the events from the specified file or directory path, and even automatically deduplicate them. The tool will also allow you to explicitly include or exclude certain event IDs, so you can narrow the focus of your investigation. Also keep in mind that we can use this in conjunction with CAPE as well. There's already a module available, so you can perform a CAPE pull for all event logs and have the data automatically processed and exported to CSV in seconds. EVTXE CMD can output an XML and JSON as well, not just CSV. However, CSV is particularly well suited for use in Timeline Explorer, which is another Zimmerman tool that we're going to look at. If you're not familiar with it, think of it as an extremely lightweight CSV and Excel spreadsheet viewer that provides read-only access to a target file, allowing numerous powerful search and filtering options to enable an examiner to quickly find data of interest. So when we open the CSV generated output in Timeline Explorer, we can quickly group the events by the aforementioned map and well, that's where the magic begins. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So let's go ahead and hop over to our Windows 10 VM and use the tool to generate this output. And then we'll open the generated file in Timeline Explorer and blow your mind. Starting with Windows Vista, the default location of our logs is in Windows System32 WinEVT Logs whereas back in the XP days, we would find them in Windows System32 config. We now have the newer binary XML EVTX format, which is far more efficient than the older binary EVT format. Thanks in part to the newer format, we now have numerous additional logs on modern Windows systems. You'll see 140 in this particular example on this plain vanilla Windows 10 install, which is quite common, whereas in the XP days, we had three, application, system, and security. Of course, those three are still here, but now we have numerous additional logs. So let's go ahead and fire up the tool and take a look at our available options. Starting at the top, we have our normal D and F options, which are quite common in many Zimmerman tools, allowing us to specify a directory or file to process. We have our output formats, including CSV, JSON, and XML. We have our additional options, including the ability to include or exclude a comma-separated list of event IDs, this can help us filter out some of the noise and focus our investigation. We have a maps option, which will allow us to specify a non-default location for our maps, which we'll talk about in a moment. We have the all important VSS option, telling the tool to process all volume shadows. The dedupe option is enabled by default when we use VSS. And then we have debug and trace. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the default maps that are included with the tool. You'll probably recognize some of these Windows event IDs and log names. What we'll do is actually take a look at the syntax by looking at one of these with Notepad. And I think you'll agree that it looks to be quite easy to create your own maps to extend the functionality of the tool. So let's tab through a couple of these until we find one of interest. How about something with terminal services, which will be some of our RDP logs. So let's go ahead and maximize this and take a look at what we have. 
We'll come back to the metadata at the top, but here is the all important maps section, which in this case will also populate the variable percent user percent and percent address percent with those properties. And then we have some commented out sections near the bottom and showing us our valid properties that we can include. And below that we have a sample event log so we can see exactly how this particular event ID is constructed. If we scroll back up to the top and take a look at that metadata that we had, we have author, description, event ID, and channel. Now the description field is quite important because that's what we're actually going to see when we create our CSV output and open it up with Timeline Explorer. So this is kind of like the plain English description of what we have to work with and what we're looking for. So let's go back to the command prompt and actually run the tool to generate our output. So we're going to use the TACD option to specify the live systems log directory. Then we'll use TAC -TAC CSV to specify the output location of our CSV file. We can optionally name that CSV file, in this case eventlogs.csv. And then we have the all important VSS option to parse our volume shadows. So in this case, we are writing the eventlogs.csv file, but if we didn't specify that, a file would be created based upon a date and timestamp. As we run the tool, you'll notice quite a bit of information scrolling by, but most of what you're seeing are a list of event IDs and their associated counts as it parses all of these logs. We'll go ahead and watch this scroll through and let the tool finish because it isn't actually going to take very long at all, as you'll see, which is pretty awesome considering how many logs it's parsing. So as you can see, we processed 180 files in just under 22 seconds. We do have a few errors, which is not uncommon, especially when we include our volume shadows, but overall a pretty low error count. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what we have within Timeline Explorer. This will take just a second to load, and there we go. The first thing we need to do is right click on any of these columns and select Column Chooser. We want to make sure we're looking at all of our available columns, especially map description. And in this case we are, so we're good. So let's go ahead and maximize this and start looking through our logs. Now bear with me, this isn't the magic part, but this is still very useful. These are all of the logs that we pulled from this live system and from the volume shadows because we use that option. And we can easily search through them and filter them and sort them and do anything we want to get at the data that we're interested in. So for example, we'll go up to the top and type in Davis RG, and then we will instantly filter on things that contain Davis RG, just like that. So again, that's a very simple example, but you get the idea. So now let's go ahead and clear that and take a look at that magic part. What we're going to do is scroll over to the right until we find that map description column. And then we're simply going to drag it up to that column headers section right here and we'll let go and then we'll drag over to the left and look at that. A plain English description of some of the most important things pulled from these event logs. How about this one? A new service was installed in the system. That would be especially important when looking for malware persistence mechanisms as an example. So here's event ID 7045 from system. It's already sorted in chronological order and available for us to easily further filter and look through just like that. But wait, there's more. See the executable info column? Let's drag that up underneath this and go back to the left. And now check that out. We have a subgrouping by the actual executable associated with the new service. We can easily search and scroll down through here and look just at a glance to see exactly what executables were associated with those particular services. So that's extremely powerful. How about another example? Let's drag this down and get rid of it and we'll find how about the username column. So let's go ahead and grab username from the right over here and we'll drag it up. And now let's look at how about an account was logged off. So we'll go ahead and expand that. And now we have a subgrouping by username. This is 4634 from security. And as we go over to the right, there's payload data one and there are our usernames just like that. Not a whole lot of activity on this system, but you get the idea. This is another extremely powerful use of the tool. So we can group by any of these columns and filter on any of this and sort it any way we want it. Extremely powerful capability. So we went from nothing to all of our event logs 
in a completely searchable, sortable, exportable format in about, I don't know, 35 to 40 seconds. It's just that easy. And of course, this is from a live system, but we can do this on a dead box as well, or we can do it from a cape pole and have all of this stuff automatically done in one fell swoop. We can have cape actually go out, grab all the event logs, and then use the module associated with EVTXE CMD and automatically generate this output for us just like that. Super easy to use and super useful, I think you'll agree. So that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this introduction to Windows Forensics episode. I hope that you found this very useful. And as always, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode. And for now, that's been it. So I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.